Hello everyone, my name is Parker and I am the YA generalist for Johns Island and currently working at Bees Ferry. And today I'm going to be doing a follow-up video to another program that I had done over the summer where I did a beginner's lesson on painting fantasy and science fiction miniatures. Fantasy and sci-fi miniatures are used for games like Dungeons and Dragons and for tabletop wargaming like Warhammer or games like Flames of War and other games like that. Um, and in that original video, which I'm going to try and make sure gets linked into this one so you can follow up on the basics, I went over some very, very simple techniques and such on how you can get a handle on starting with this hobby and giving it a look. Um, it is a very fun, rewarding hobby that I've been participating in for, gosh, 15, 15 years now at least. And in today's video, I'm going to cover some more advanced techniques and build on those basic ones from the previous video. Um, as before, you're going to need to provide your own minis and paint, and those are the kind of things that are a little bit personal, so you're going to want to look around either online or at several of the local game shops to see if you can locate minis or paints that you like. Uh, it doesn't matter what you're painting, the whole point of it is to have fun and to learn and grow. You know, it, it takes time to get some really solid uh, practice in. So, I'm going to go ahead and flip my camera around and let's have a look at what we're doing today. Okay. Hopefully everyone can see that. And as before, in the original video, I mentioned some of the basic supplies that you need. You do need a plate that you can use as a palette to put paint on and to work on. Definitely pick a plate that you're never ever going to use again because it is going to be stained, as you can see. I've been using this one for a number of years now. So, just a, just a thing to keep in mind. You're going to need a cup. And that cup's going to need to have water in it. And that water cup, something to keep in mind is that's another one of those things that's going to get ruined beyond use for drinking. Uh, most paint is non-toxic because we're going to be using acrylics, but it still leaves stains and can ruin a cup. So set that aside. The next thing we're going to need are several different kinds of brushes. I'm going to start with going over some of the techniques that we're going to be using, and they're going to be using different kinds of brushes. There are, we are going to be doing three things today. The first thing we're going to be going over is something called shading. Shading is when you use an ink or a wash that's a very, very thin paint like this, or like this, do our painting and I'm going to pop some out and put it on my palette to show you. When we're, using, when we're doing shading, we use a longer, thinner, finer brush. It's the kind of thing that we're going to want. We don't want a flat, wide brush usually. I'm going to dip it in the paint pot very carefully, put some on the palette so we can see it and see how thin this paint is. It's almost trans how it's almost translucent. That's because we're going to use this um, ink, this ink, this paint, to put it into small cracks in minis and small like small recesses in detail. And I'll show you an example of what we're going to be working on today. The thing we're going to be working on today, we're going to be working on two different bottles. We're going to be working on this Umber Hulk. It's a kind of bug monster from Dungeons and Dragons. And as you can see, he's got kind of like little pits and holes in his skin. And right along there, and along there. And we're going to be using this shade to kind of bring out and make those color, make those little spots stand out. So it looks like it's a 3D effect, even though it's such a small, small area. And they're very, very tiny little, little holes and bumps. Now, I'm going to go ahead and wash my brush off. The next thing we're going to be doing today, before I demonstrate too much further, 
is something called dry brushing. When you're dry brushing, you're going to need a piece of a paper towel, a napkin, something like that. You're going to want to have a brush that has a flat, like wide thing to it. And if you can, you're going to want one that's a, where the bristles are a little bit stiffer. And dry brushing is a thing where you use a light color to make a, an area stand out a little bit more. So you can catch ridges where light would be. Um, let me grab a mini real quick as an example. Just a moment. All right. Here's an example. See, we're looking at this uh, warrior science fiction lady. And we see on the base these ridges and lips and edges here. And how the paint's just a little bit lighter at the edges. That's where I've done dry brushing to make those um, edges stand out without having to sit there with a tiny brush and run it along the edge to make it look to make it look like it's an edge. It just makes the model look that much better. And it's a really basic, really easy technique. And the final thing that we're going to be working on today is basing. Basing and texture paints. Those are a little bit more of a, an advanced thing for making a minis, uh, the thing you're standing on, stand out a little bit more. See, we've got this big white space on the Umber Hulk. I could paint this and make it, you know, kind of look like stone, or I could use a, um, they're sometimes called technical paints, but they're uh, textured. If you open the pot up, have a look inside, you can see it's kind of grainy and looks a little bit like it will dry in a funny pattern, almost like spackle. I'm going to grab another example. It's another one of the space people. That's just that um, gray paint here layered on the base to make it look like it's got ridges and bumps and cracks. So it looks like it's, you know, like a soil on the moon or something. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with first shading. See, I've got this blue shade here already on my palette. I've got my Umber Hulk. I get it a little bit on my brush, just a little bit. And I'm going to kind of run it over the areas here on the Umber Hulk that have those holes in them. And I need a little bit more. It's dried up a little bit. See. See how it sort of seeps into the cracks. Oops. I've got a little bit too much in there. So I'm going to take my napkin. And I'm going to kind of dab at it a little bit. And clean it up. I'm going to gently and carefully run over a little bit more and see how it's making those little black spots stand out more. That kind of gives it a bluish look because we used a blue wash and you can use different colors of wash to give things a little bit of a different flavor like I've got some red ink here or some I guess it's more of a, a really dark magenta almost I'm gonna run it over this claw A little bit too much, but that should be okay. And so it looks, 
gives it kind of a different look than the blue. It's got a warmer tone to it. And I think I kind of like that. That warm tone more than the blue. So I'm going to, before this dries, I'm very quickly dab it away. And then we're going to add some red over the top of that just to change that tint a little bit. And you see how it makes those, those holes stand out? That's kind of the effect we're wanting because those holes are very, very tiny and they basically the model looks kind of flat unless you shade it. And I'm going to go over the top of his shell a little bit and as it dries, it's only going to dry in those little holes mostly. It's just going to kind of blend into the the upper shell and the uh, the other parts. Let's give it a little bit more because he's got a big, big, broad back. And we don't want to overdo it too much. But there we go. See. See how now it's starting to dry, it's giving that, that, that brown has a much warmer tone to it. That's what we want. It gives it maybe just a bit of a different, a more, more natural look. Like, make some stand out. But you don't have to use red or anything like that. You can use any color wash that you want. If you liked that, if you liked that um, blue, then you can use blue. If you want to try something with purple or a brown, a lighter brown, or even black, make him look a little more centered, or kind of a fleshy shade, you might have some success with that. It's kind of all in what you want to do because again, you're painting these minis to look good to you. And the whole point of it is to have fun and be creative. All right, so I'm gonna set Mr. Umber Hulk here over to dry. We're gonna come back to him and we're gonna go take our brush, make sure we wash it off. You know, remember to dip it in, but don't let the the top of the brush, make it all the way to the into the water, because that will make the glue in it come undone. And you just wipe it off. Give it a little twirl of our finger. Twirl it with your fingers like that. Get some of the water out of it. Now set that brush aside. Next, we're going to move on to the thing called dry brushing. I mentioned it before, and it uses just regular paint. Here's a, a kind of a light gray. Now, what I've got here today is a piece of clear water that's meant to go with this shark. We're gonna put our shark in there. He's supposed to sit in there like that. But if you'll notice, it doesn't really look like water, does it? It looks kind of just like this blue blob. Well, I'm gonna take my shark out we're going to do our dry brushing. I'm going to take my um, dry brush. And here comes the strange thing. I'm, going to, I'm not going to put any water on it. I'm just going to dip it in the paint. Just get a little bit of paint on there. Don't want too much. I'm going to put a little bit of paint on my palette. Just a little bit, we don't want Got some on the end of the brush. I'm going to take it and we're going to get our tissue paper and we're going to wriggle it around in the paper so that it gets a lot of the paint on the paper. 
and it's real, real dry. We don't want a lot of paint on the brush. And just have a look at it just as an example. We want, I'm going to put it on my thumb. See, I've just got that little tiny gray line right there. That's kind of what I want. We don't want a lot of paint. And to dry brush, easy way to do it is to take your brush and just flick it like that up against the model, wherever we want to make that highlight. So for this reason we're using gray on this water is foam. Remember, if you look at a wave, it's got all that foam on top. Just like that. See? And I've started to run out of paint. So I'm going to go back to my palette. Go back to my tissue. I'm going to stab it on in there. And we're going to go back to it. You can do real quick flicks if you want to be less good. But if you want to have more control, you can go slow. I don't want to see like that. Just slowly scrape it along. I like those quick. Quick motions like that because it gets a lot of paint where you want it. And your brush is going to kind of gravitate towards those raised areas because you're going at it so quickly. Now I'm running out of paint. A little bit more on my brush. Yeah. Put it on my palette. Set aside my gray. We're gonna poke it on in there. So we're gonna catch the back too. If you're wondering how I got that blue color, because if you can kind of see it, this is sort of clear originally. It's another trick you can do with these with those inks that I've shown you for what we're shading. You just put a little bit on there and let it dry slowly and do it and layer it over and over and over again, and it will eventually stain the plastic. or the metal or whatever material you're working with because some models are made of pewter some are made of resin you can do it it even works on wood i want to do wood carving like that now see there we go that looks so much nicer doesn't it it looks like real water oop missed a spot Fix some on there That looks a lot more like water, doesn't it? Let's see how it looks with our shark inside. Boop. Now the shark himself, he isn't painted. He's kind of a work in progress, but I'll probably get to doing him in a later video. See? And that's all just flicking all that white and foam make it look real and nice is from that flicking of my brush. So we're going to set our shark aside because we are done with him for the day. Make sure we take our brush. We're going to dip it in water. And we're going to run it back and forth on the towel just like that. Just like we were dry brushing it. Get as much of that out. Now a lot of people will say that you do need to have like a brush cleaner, and I am one of those people. If you're getting into painting and you're really, really enjoying it and you want to save your brushes from getting messed up, I recommend this. It's a really good paint cleaner. And I'll show you how we're going to use it just because I want to make sure I don't mess my brush up. Get a little bit of water in it, run it back and forth through the, the soap it is a kind of brush soap. So we've got that on there. We're just going to 
squeeze everything out and see how clean the brush is now. It's like there's no paint in it at all. Squeeze it a little bit with our fingers. A little bit more with our fingers to get it all dried out. And there we go. I'm going to set aside our brush cleaner. And now we're going to come back to our umber hulk. There's one more neat thing we can do. See, have a look. See how different that looks now. That the it's dried. It kind of has a reddish look to it, which is real different. But there's something else I wanted to show you guys with stain with uh, ink, and that's staining, which is a part of. So we've got these bone bits here, like his his mandibles. Well, maybe you know he probably lives in the lives in the wilderness and doesn't brush his teeth too much. So we're gonna we're gonna stain those and take some brown. This is just kind of a neat trick. It's real simple to do. Some of that brown shade. I put it on my palette. Not a whole lot. Don't need a whole lot. We're going to get a little bit on our brush. We're going to take our brush and we're going to run it along his mandible. Just like that. See how it just kind of comes off in little, little splotches? Like that. You can do this with Anything you kind of want to make look dirty, you should use a brown wash. These fingernails, or I guess his claws. He's got, he's probably got claws. He's a big, nasty monster. See how we got that? And if you look at it now, it's not as that, it doesn't have that clean bone look to it. It's a little bit more grungy and dirty. And once that dries, it will set in and make it look like it's been stained from use and wear. You can do that with clothes. You can do that with armor. You can do that with, you know, any different number of things. And I'm going to do one more example of dry brushing. One of the tricks to do with dry brushing is you want to make sure that you're using a lighter color brown. A lighter color than the color you're dry brushing onto. And see, I have this light brown on his armor, on his shell. I got this slightly lighter brown. I'm gonna do exactly like I did with the gray, with the sea foam. Just get a little bit of it on the brush. Wiggle it, wiggle it around. Give it a check. It's kind of stain my finger just a little bit like it's dirty. That's what, we, that's what we want. And this one, we're going to try and stick to the areas where light is going to hit this guy. So, the middle of his back. And along the ridges here. We're going to make sure something this large, we kind of want to keep going in a single direction. So, moving down, down, down. Makes it look a little bit more natural that way. And it catches those ridges here on his back where his shell segments and makes them stand out from that normal brown. And because we're only hitting the raised areas, we're not interfering with where we put that red wash. So in a way, we're making sure that his armor and the rest of him stands out and makes it look really visually appealing on the table. For these smaller areas, I'm going to go flick it back and forth and back and forth. And so you can still see the sort of pits and divots and such where we put our shade. And 
And that kind of covers the basics of dry brushing on large and small scale. That covers shading. And that covers a couple of other little advanced things like that. But the last thing I wanted to talk to you guys about, it's probably my favorite part of painting, and that's bases. Or basing. Setting aside my paints, because I don't need them anymore. And that's where we take a mini that we've painted. We'll say our Umber Hulk. And I'm probably going to come back and do some touch-ups with him. And we're going to use this um, textured paint. I'm going to set this out. This is where we get things a little weird. We're not going to be using a regular brush. We're going to be using a, a sculpting tool or a scooper. Soon I'm going to, I'm going to get a blob of it. I'm going to put it on the, the white spot. Whoop. Looks like it escaped. On the white spot down here. Yeah, because I don't, I don't want to paint all that. Get it all on there. And then we're going to have a tool. We're going to dip it in our water. A little bit in the water. If you can hear that. Just to kind of get it wet. And we're going to push and dab and poke at that blob of gray texture to spread it out like you would spackle or you know, um, other things like that that have kind of a texture you know, like popcorn tiles on your roof or popcorn tiles on your tiling on your ceiling and see how it's spreading out oh, gonna need a little bit more the reason I'm going with this kind of gray is, you know, this guy probably lives. He lives in the mountains or he lives underground. One. We want to make sure that we're getting it in there. But another thing we can do is when it gets close to his feet, we use the smaller end of our little scooper thing, or a, or a toothpick, or to push it rather than like ladling it out there so that we don't risk uh, getting paint all over his feet, this texture all over his feet and hiding them. Because that wouldn't look very good. Easy enough. I want to make sure we cover all the, as much of the white as we can. It's a shortcut to having to paint all that space that he's standing on. I don't want to do that. Do you? Probably not. It'd be a lot of work. A little bit more. That's a bit too much. There we go. See what we're doing and see how it's kind of coming together. Some under his foot. Down and around in there. There we go. And Oops. Something we have to be careful of is once the stuff, until the stuff dries, it's not all that sticky. But once it dries, it adheres to the base. Much better. A little bit more. We're almost done, guys. Thanks for sticking with me. But I wanted to show you how this works. What it looks like when it's all done. Okay. 
go. Put it down in between his toes. Rinse well, this off, so make it flow a little bit better. All right, there is our finished up Umber Hulk. I'm going to go back and do a few more details on him, like his eyeballs and his antenna. But that's the bulk of the work done. I've got the base, which, when that dries, will come out hard and kind of crunchy looking like stone. And that means we can skip painting on the base and we'll have something that looks nice and sort of three-dimensional like he's standing on a stone floor and it's important that we have that look because we had wanted to make him look more three-dimensional with our shade and our wash even though he's a 3d thing it catches all those extra details and it makes it look that much better when it's all said and done so thank you guys for tuning in and listening, and I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm going to try and do another one here soon. All right. Have a good day.